Hello, everybody, and welcome to Locate a Locum's webinar on everything that you need to know about locumin. So joining us today, we have Zaheer from Revise Pharma um, as our special guest, and then we also have Stevie from Locate a Locum. Stevie is going to be moderating the comments today, guys, so if you have any questions or anything, feel free to drop them in the comments below, and we will get them answered. So how we're running today is getting started. So we're going to talk about everything you need to know about getting started with Locomin. And, oh, sorry guys, I just had a wee error message pop up here. Um, let me see. Don't, don't worry about that one, sir. That's fine. It's, it's, it's just a standard message, so don't worry. Great. I can take it off. Okay. So that is brilliant. Um, so yes, yeah, so we're going to talk about everything you need to know about getting started with Locomin, how you can actually go about finding Locum shifts and booking shifts. Then we're going to pass over to Zaheer and he's going to give you some top tips um, from himself in terms of how he got started into Locomin and some of the top tips of the trade in terms of how to succeed. Next is then we're going to talk about some different myths and misconceptions that people have surrounding Locomin, any questions that we constantly get asked, we're going to answer here. And then lastly, we're going to finish with a wee bit of a QA. and a and we're going to answer all of your guys' questions as well. So first up, um, what do you want to get out of this webinar? Um, is there anything in particular that you want to know? What are you hoping to gain? Are you hoping to gain information about how it is you get started? Are you really just excited for Zaheer's tips about how to succeed at Locomin? Um, let us know, just pop them in the comments below. And if you have any other questions or if there's anything that we haven't covered yet, please feel free to drop them below and we can add this to the um, webinar as well. So first things first is getting started. Now, this is arguably the most time consuming part of getting started with Locomin. To hear you're nodding. <laughs> Have you struggled with this as well? Somewhat, so, yeah. Yeah, it, it wasn't so much um, with Locate Locum, it was more than the external setting up, which took definitely a long, longer period of time than the loc Locate Locum setup. But it's, yeah. you know, you've got to do it. And once it's done, it's done. Exactly, that's it. So as Zaheer rightly said, um, once it's done, it's done. So it's best to sort of get yourself organized at the start and then you really don't have to worry about it. So the first thing that you have to do is you need to get all of your essential documents together. Now these vary ever so slightly depending on if you're a pharmacist, if you're a dispenser, if you want full details, um, visit locatealocum.com and we've got checklists on our site to keep you right. But what everyone is going to need is you're going to need your photographic ID. So that could be your passport, driving license, anything like that. Next thing that you're going to need to make sure you have is your indemnity insurance insurance sorry um then you're going to need to have your enhanced dbs check your place checks and then finally you need to have your gphc registration number now if you gather all that and have that to hand your registration process will go a lot quicker and you'll be able to get started a lot faster it just takes that little bit of organization at the start and as i said once it's done it's done um, the other thing that you might want to consider as well is actually getting registered with some of the larger chains. So, for example, the likes of Boots, Asda, Lloyds, they all have ever so slightly different processes in terms of getting registered with that particular pharmacy. So if there's a pharmacy or anything like that that you're wanting to look in with fairly regularly, we recommend going through the process at the beginning to register with that pharmacy just so you're able to book shifts a lot faster. So... That brings us on nicely to um, how you actually find shifts. So um, if you download Locate a Locum, we are actually the number one um, Locum app for finding shifts in the UK with over 100 five star reviews across both um, Apple and Google Play Store. So. It's really very, very straightforward. It's used by over 25,000 healthcare professionals across the UK, and we work with over 8,000 pharmacies. So there is a crazy amount of shifts we're constantly adding. I think it's now about 12,000 shifts a week, Stevie, am I right? Uh, yeah, at any one time, there can be up to 100,000 shifts live on the platform. So um, pretty, pretty, pretty busy on there. Um, and if you can, you can set your filters and search for the ones that suit you best. Yeah, so there's absolutely no shortage of work whenever it comes to locumin, which is why everyone's looking to locum at the minute. Um, so it's really straightforward in terms of how you get started with Locate a Locum. You download the app, 
you go through a very quick um, sign up process. It literally takes about 30 seconds. As soon as you're signed up, you upload your documents, that's you ready to book. We have literally seen people download the app and book their first shift within about five minutes. Um, so yeah, you can see on the screen here, you create your own profile. That's where you upload all of your documents. And then as Stevie said before, you're able to go on, put in your filters, um, decide what radius, what area you're wanting to find shifts in and book straight from the app, which is brilliant. So our next top tip for Locomen would be staying organized. That is arguably the hardest thing whenever you're going from store to store, <laughs> you've got all these different start times and everything like that. So it can be really hard to stay on top of. So one of the things that we have and we have created is a diary feature, which I'll actually just jump over so you can get a view of it here. So we have the diary feature on Locate a Locum that lets you populate any shifts that you have coming up. It gives you all the information about start times, end times. And what you can actually do is say if you also work other shifts, maybe three shifts for Locate a Locum and any other external shifts, you can have them all in the one place. And this is a really, really good track record. So you can always check when you're working. It also helps whenever it comes to the end of year because it can help you keep a track of your um, spending as well. And yeah, so again, really, really handy. Just making sure I haven't missed anything there. Uh, really handy because it helps whenever you're doing your accounting at the end of the year, you've got a live, um, you have a live record of what it is you've earned in any given month, which is brilliant as well. So again, once you download the app, you have live um, shift information. So at any one time. So it's brilliant because as soon as a shift is filled, it's actually removed from the app. So you never have to worry about whether or not that shift's already been taken because if it's been taken, it won't appear. And you can manage everything just straight from your mobile. You're able to search, apply and book straight from the app itself. So I'm going to pass you over quickly here to Zaheer and he is going to talk through how he got started into Locomin and his Locum journey so far. Hello everyone, so I'm Zaheer from uh, Revised Pharma. I'm sure many of you follow the page and you're on the group chats. Um, so a little bit about myself. So I don't know if some of you know, I only um, kind of sat my, well, did my training year from 2019 to 2020. Now, after 2020, because of the whole pandemic, we weren't really able to, um, like, just do the exam and then go on the register as you would be doing this year or um, as some of you might have done in the past years. But what happened to me was I was on the provisional register. Um, when I was on the provisional register, you weren't really allowed to locum. But what I was able to do was basically, because I didn't want to work full time, I just wanted to kind of like keep the money in whilst I could revise for the exams. I asked one pharmacy if I could be like a relief for them. They said, sure, we'd be happy. Um, and that was the first pharmacy I kind of like spoke to and they were like, sure, 16 pounds an hour. And I was like, yes, perfect, I'll take it. 16 pounds an hour, like that's six pounds more an hour than what I was earning as a trainee pharmacist gets to November and I'm thinking you know what 16 pounds isn't fair it, it's not it's not what it is for me so I started um kind of like messaging around and actually my old trainee pharmacist uh, my old trainee my old trainer my tutor basically um he messaged me one day and was like oh would you rather be a relief here we'll give you 23 pounds an hour I was like perfect okay jumped over 23 pounds an hour. Now I'm like, okay, well, this is um, a big jump up and I'm happy here. Like, um, I'll, I'll be happy to just relief here for as long as I want to. Then I started hearing, well, I had already started hearing about um, what real, like, fully qualified locums were getting. And I was like, okay, bit, you know, bit um, weary about, like, are they actually going to be earning such high shifts for so long? Because I was hearing from other pharmacists, that, yeah, like I'm getting £35 an hour, I'm getting £40 an hour. And I was like, okay, I just can't wait to go on the register um, and basically try my luck on apps like Locator Locum. Anyway, so on April 2021, joined the register, passed the exam, 
as I am sure most of you are glad, hence why a lot of you actually use my educational material. Um, and then I actually got a phone call from Locator Locum and they were like, we're looking for pharmacists and we've got shifts for 40 pounds plus. Um, would you consider working any of those shifts? So I was like, hold on, how long will this 40 pounds an hour go on for, for example? Um, is it like long term? And, and the person I was on the phone with were like, well, we've got, as um, Sarah mentioned earlier, there's like a high abundance of shifts, like the, the work is always there. Um, so anyway, I decided to basically, I had a weekend off as um, a relief for the place that I was working in at for 23 pounds an hour. And because I had the weekend off, literally the Thursday night, I remember right before I went to sleep, I went on Locator Locum and then I just applied randomly to the highest paying shifts. And then I woke up the next morning and had I had literally been accepted for the Saturday and the Sunday to work like 40 to 45 pounds an hour. So I was like, oh, like, I was, I was a bit annoyed because like I had basically thrown away my weekend because I didn't really think that um, I'd be accepted. But turns out, you know, it was as easy as you just click apply. Um, if you can negotiate, negotiate. And it's it's basically that easy to do it with Locator Locum. And I basically ended up leaving the place that I was relieving for to just Locum through Locator Locum. And the lowest rate that I've taken so far is £40 an hour. So I'm quite happy with that. Go to the next. So my top five tips. When you're locuming and... Um, as you can see from my journey, I used to jump at the first opportunity. I recommend you don't do that because normally you, when you jump at an opportunity, you're normally kind of like promising the person that you're taking the opportunity from some sort of longevity, like, okay, fine, I'll be your relief. But it looks quite bad if you take someone on and then two weeks down the line, you want to leave. And then you kind of almost feel like you're tied into some informal contracts basically. Um, so first thing I do, look around. Um, if uh, you don't really see something that's going, okay, that's perfect, um, then don't take it. Um, kind of just like do your background research, um, carry on looking to basically make an informed decision. My second point is have the confidence to ask the rate that you deserve. What's the worst that can happen? They can just say no. Um, if you ask for the rate that you deserve, then they'll give, um, they'll, they'll probably at least increase your rate. So even if you were going to do it anyway at the rate that it was set, if you manage to basically um, increase it by even, I don't know, a couple pounds an hour, then you're a couple pounds an hour up. So always have the confidence to ask for the rate that you deserve. Um, that's any any time you locum, whether it's through locator locum or, for example, for me when I was dealing with um, like privately through my old tutor. Another thing that I would say is don't compromise the way that you work based on the rate that you're getting. What I mean by that is, if you're going to take a role, be prepared to give it a hundred percent. If you're going in with a mentality of, okay, well, that rate isn't really high enough anyway, so I'm not really going to give it my best. Then that doesn't really do, well, the pharmacy profession a lot of justice. It doesn't do the pay person that you're working for a lot of favors. And it's not, remember, we're, we're patients first profession. It's not doing the patients any favors either. So if you're thinking, okay, well, that's, you know, I'm not really happy with that rate. So I'm just going to sit in the consulting room and just do all the walk-ins. Why would you do that? If you only work, if everyone only works for the rates they were happy with, then in turn, the pharmacies and the employers would be forced to basically increase their rates anyway to match your expectations. So yeah, that's another one of my uh, points. And then secondly, understand your accounting. Now, I mean, I learned through basically um, YouTube how to do my accounting. You might consider it, 
more time beneficial to just get an accountant. Um, accountants charge what, like two hundred pounds to do a self assessment on like a self employed um, trader, and that two to three hundred pounds you could make from one locum shift anyway so some people basically balance it out they're like you know what i'd rather just work the one extra shift and let the accountant deal with it all that works out more time efficiently um and i can't be bothered to do all the maths um but i'm there are people who like to keep track of everything so if you are like me and you do want to just do it yourself um it's better to actually look into your accounting more I mean, I've spoken with accountants um, so that they can give me tips for free. Normally, they give you tips. Um, but yeah, um, out of interest, does Locate Locum have any accounting tools? Yes. I, in, I in, ter might. in terms of tools, we have like an, uh, an invoice um, invoice generator, an invoice template. Uh, we actually, we actually, one of the, the last webinars we did for Locums was with our partner accountants. And they came on and they gave some amazing advice on self-assessments and um, doing your tax returns, like the expenses that you could claim back. It was unbelievable. So after this webinar, what I'll do is I'll actually send that through to everyone who's um, who's registered because it, it, it's actually invaluable. It, it might even be more specific than the YouTube videos because obviously it's aimed at locum pharmacists. Yeah, there you go. Well, that that's another gem that I didn't realize Locate Locum had um, until now. So... As well as that, um, my final point would be to set up your locum account in advance. So I think Sarah touched on that. So it does normally take the longest um, amount of time to not set up with Locate Locum, but the companies like Boots, Lloyd's, um, they all have like quite lengthy processes. I think Lloyd's, you have to jump through about 26 hoops to um, actually just get onto the locum register that they have um but yeah so if you're for example coming near the end of your employment somewhere and you're like okay well i'm stopping working at i don't know boots for example in three months time um that three months is i would actually say i'd probably start looking at setting up with all the different accounts um that the pharmacy stores want you to sign up with because by the time that you've left your current employment you'll be ready to go but yeah so those are my five tips those are some brilliant tips so here i really liked um the don't compromise you way you the way you work um we were actually just talking before we came on live here about how small a community pharmacy is so yeah. i think that was a really great point because people do talk as well mm -hmm. So you would never want to compromise the way that you're working or the way that you're being perceived um, at yeah. all. So excellent point. Yeah. And I mean, like, um, for example, I know some of the big stores, they actually rank the locum on how they worked. So when it comes to it, if you've gone and you've just not bothered with the way that you've worked, they'll, they'll have that on the system and you'll find it a lot more difficult to find roles as well. Mm -hmm. um, Luckily, I never had that problem because always gave it 100%. But, yeah. I know, your top locum, so you are here. <laughs> um, yes, and then again, um, I think I forgot to mention before, in terms of if you're having any issues in setting up with any of our different um, different chains or the different multiples, if you visit .locum .com, um there's full guides on how to register with each individual um every in every store and then also if you're really struggling um you can always contact our team at info at locatedlocum.com and they'll be able to guide you through the process as well so yeah. um next point is debunking the myths so stevie and zaheer um i'm sure you're well aware that there's are the same questions that we get asked all the time um all around locum in and stevie's laughing because he knows fine rightly um, <laughs> what i was going to say so zaheer do you have any questions that you would like to ask us or anything that you've always wanted some clarity around sure so so um i even like reached out to a couple of friends and they kind of like wanted me to ask these questions um but like for example who sets the rates for the shifts and what, what does a locum agency like locate locum like what role do they play when it comes to setting uh rates yeah so that is a question quite rightly that we get asked all the time um I think like, the conception often is that Locator Locum um, sets the rates, but we, we actually don't. 
And if you, if, if you kind of put it like this, um, we see ourselves as a kind of technology platform that facilitates um, locums with the temporary health, the temporary shifts. Um, so with this in mind, it's, the, it's actually the health organization, in this case, the pharmacy who sets the shift rate. Uh, and that's, that, that's because they also upload the shift rate, shifts. So 99% of the shifts are actually uploaded by the pharmacy and then they set the rate. Um, so yeah, it's completely, it's completely up to the pharmacy. We're a technology platform. We, we sort of provide locums with the technology in order to get the best rates and the most flexible shifts for their lifestyle. So yeah, that, that's one we always get asked. Yeah, sure. So, so when, when you're applying, um, so when I click apply, um, what happens there? Does it go to the coordinator itself? Or yeah, like... so it'll it'll so from the employer side, what will happen is that they will get a notification that they've got an application, and they will then be able to see a glimpse of your locum profile, and um, mm -hmm. and then they have the ability to accept or decline um your application, um, and and what we always say is that you know if they've declined your application, it's not it's not based on the quality of your profile. A lot of the times, it's based on the fact that they've maybe got internal cover for that shift, and um, or someone's been moved from a different pharmacy for that shift. So whenever people are often discouraged by the fact that they've maybe had a rejection, we always say, looking at our data, you actually do have to apply for four shifts to get one. That, now that's a maybe slightly our data. It might be three to one, two to one now, just because of the demand for locums. But looking at the data, that's about the, the sweet number that we would say. So apply for four shifts, apply for as many as possible. I think Sarah covered earlier that um, our technology won't allow you to be double booked. It just simply won't. So if you book, you're booked into a shift, the other applications will dissolve and they'll they'll no longer appear. Um, so for that same date, that is. Okay, so it's a good bit of technology then. <laughs> yeah, it's not bad. We've got our development team are very proud of it. So um, yeah. yeah. That's good. Okay, so also touching on um, the, because I, I know like everyone really just wants to kind of talk about the rates for um, locoming. Um, so, for example, how comes some of the rates on Locate Locum are sometimes, well, they could even sometimes be higher than other locum agencies, and they can sometimes be lower than other locum agencies? Do you know yeah. why that might be? Yeah, again, that, that's a good question. And the, the really short answer is we, we don't know. Um, like I said before, it, it's the pharmacy who sets the rates. And 99% of the time, it's also the pharmacy who posts it. It, uh, with the reason I say 99% of the time is because in 1% of the time, if someone has multiple, multiple rates, often we'll up bulk upload them or multiple, multiple shifts will bulk upload them, but but it, it's based on their rate that they provide. Um, so in terms of other agencies having different rates, uh, both higher and lower, that could be down to multiple reasons. And I just, I suppose I just can't comment on the other agencies, but I know that the pharmacy post on our shift, uh, the shifts on our platform, and I'm not 100% why they would be different. They, they probably shouldn't be in most cases. Okay, so again, it's the coordinator on the opposite yeah, end. Exactly that. Okay, cool. Um, and then uh, this is probably the last question about rates anyway, but I know, I know it's just such a, like- No, it's a, hot, it's a hot topic and I completely understand all the questions. Topic for sure. Um, but like, so I, I remember, Sometimes I can negotiate on Locate Locum. Sometimes it, I just don't have the option. Um, I feel like I know what you're going to tell me, and it's probably the coordinator at the opposite end who <laughs> controls that. Um, but could you like confirm or like go more into that? Like, how come sometimes you can yeah. negotiate and sometimes you can't? Yeah, so I'll elaborate a little bit on it. Um, but firstly, sort of the background on the rate negotiation feature. So, so the rate negotiation feature actually came from Locums. So we did a survey at the end of 2019, and we, we produced the results in 2020. And it was actually requested as a feature by Locums. They said, why do we have to keep phoning and doing this telephone ping pong where we're phoning up, you're phoning the coordinator, we're phoning you back, and we're trying to organize the rate? There should be something on the app if, like, they said, if your development team's so good, then there should be something they app. And they took that as a challenge and they went away and they created the rate negotiation feature. So firstly, what this allows you to do is it allows you to um, submit the rate that you think is fair for a shift. And that rate that you submit goes along with your application to the coordinator and they can just accept or decline that shift. And again, this is something that, that whenever they post a shift, there's a tick box for the employer to say, 
do you want to negotiate? Do you want to enable negotiation? Yes or no? And they click yes or no. So again, completely sort of on the employer side, we provide the technology to give the employer the ability to do that. If they decide not to do that, um, I suppose that that's that's on their side. Um, but you know, it's it, it for us. You know, the negotiation feature was originally um, originally developed in order to sort of ease the bur- admin burden for locums and also ease the admin burden for the coordinators who were picking up the phone calls all the time. Um, so we, we think it's a great feature um, and we, we do see it on a lot of shifts. Some don't have it, and again, down to the coordinate, coordinators, um, but uh, in most cases, it's still still on the shifts. Okay. Yeah, cool. Um, so, yeah, that's, that's my last question on rates, but then, so, because um, I... So what, because I've got, um, I'm the admin for a few of the group chats and then on the group chats, something that I see sometimes is, I don't know, company X hasn't paid me. Um, like why hasn't, for example, locate a locum paid me? Um, and I just want to like clarify for you. So who actually pays um, the locum? Like yeah. who's in charge of paying? Yeah, so yeah, we get this one a lot, and you know we we, we have an internal team who, who who get payment queries all the time, and um, if, if things are missed or invoices aren't left in store, and um, we we always encourage people to look at um look coming in different pharmacies, registering, and getting paid help article, which Sarah, I'm sure you'll link after, and mm-hmm. um, this sort of details the payment terms of all the companies and um, how it's best to go about getting paid, and then it also details the escalation process, so. Short answer is the the pharmacy pays the locum uh, for the shift, but the longer answer is that there's a number of steps that you should ensure that you have in place post completing the shift to ensure you get your payment as quick as possible. Um, and if you ever don't get paid or there's it goes longer than you expect, um, the, without being paid, then we, we do have an internal compliance team who can potentially get an escalation process in place where you you can you can go go to someone maybe who's gonna expedite it. But again this this could be more admin heavy then for you as a locum in terms of you could just go direct through the to, to the person. Um, so what I would say is yes the the, the, the pharmacy pays you and um, but it's all about ensuring that you've picked everything off your checklist uh, in order to make sure there's a really quick payment post shift. Yeah. And I suppose that's why my main one of my main tips is make sure you set everything up, because I think, unfortunately, most of the times that people don't get paid um, when they put in like an invoice, it's because they haven't done the real proper setup. Like I know even my sister, um, she did a locum shift for a company and um, she was like, yeah, I just left them an invoice. And I was like, "Okay, cool. But did you do the registration process? And she was like, no. And I was like, "Okay, (laughs) yeah, Yeah. you probably won't be paid couple weeks at least I think, yeah i think it, it's, it's probably worthwhile just post the webinar i'll send it out before the registration process and our help help guide mm-hmm. uh, for every, every one of the large multiples as well as some independents and sort of medium-sized mm-hmm. um, organizations because i think i think almost it's it's it, like you said it's missed at times people get excited by the actual shift and then the, it's the, the stuff before that that maybe just gets overlooked and um, yeah. so yeah no like i think these are all really great points and the reason they're frequently asked questions because maybe they're not explained enough so that's it we're happy to go through them yeah um and i think like for example um that doc that document they're going to send through that link with all the registration mm-hmm. processes for the pharmacies for those who are currently in their training years and you're thinking well what can i do at this moment to prepare myself um most of the pharmacies will be asking for cppe modules to be complete and those are something that you guys can do from now um to have ready basically i know lloyd's has like i don't know stevie do you know the exact number of <laughs> that um cpp stuff that lloyd's want you to complete it's quite a lot yeah and um, not off the top of my head but it, it, it'll be on the articles that we can mm-hmm. um we can link through so so even because i know like you can't actually reg can you register if you're if you don't have actual gphc number to do locum shifts or um you won't be able to apply on, on our platform you can get your platform as ready as possible with pre-reg as a, you can sign up as a pre-reg and then switch over once you've your gphc number and um, so, like that's a quite a good tip because you can do all the administration stuff in terms of putting your new education your 
your personal details, your bank details and things like that. And then whenever you get GPHC, it's almost like day dot, you're ready to go. Um, so that is, that's quite a good one. It's just on the sign up and you drop down to uh, pre-reg. Oh, nice. Okay. So realistically, for those who are currently doing their training year, if they've got a few hours free, they could probably do the CPPE and then the loca locum sign up stuff as well. But what do you exactly. know off the top of your head about like if they can kind of um um I might be putting you on the point here, but can they register for companies like Boots and Lloyd's as well whilst they're still pre reg or do they have to be GPH? Yeah, I'm not a hundred percent. Do you know what? I'll check with the compliance team who who I don't want to say anything that isn't completely 100% accurate so I'll check with the compliance team and again anyone who's on this email or on this, uh, yeah. this event will we'll send an email afterwards but e either way um, like there is something for trainees to be doing at the moment anyway yeah. whether, oh, it's, yeah, whether it's just sign up for local locum or the CPPE modules the CPPE modules will probably take you most of the time to be honest um, yeah. so yeah, yeah. right so those were all the questions I had for you <laughs> yes wow. um Brilliant, Sahir. Thank you very much for that. Um, I can also see um, that there is a flood of comments yeah, coming yeah. in and there's loads of questions coming in, which is absolutely amazing because um, we're just coming up to our Q&A session to round off um, the webinar here. So um, i am going through here and I actually saw a question there for you yourself, Sahir. So um, this is from Charlene. She was asking what area is it that you're actually looking in? Um, so I locum in, um, so I, I'm Croydon based for those who know where Croydon is. Um, some of you might try to avoid it, but, um, that's where I live. Um, so I basically do Croydon and then anything South and kind of to the East. Um, so I've, cause I bet you're asking like, oh, um, is he getting those kind of high shifts in an area near me? But yeah, so I was. Yeah, I mean, like, even up to, like, South London, I was working and I was getting £40 an hour. Um, but, yeah, like, Kent, I'll even go down to Crawley, Sussex area, um, and, like, towards Reading as well. Um, so one thing that I, I would probably should have been another tip that I had is if you can get a driving license, get a driving license. <laughs> Because that makes locuming a lot easier. It's not necessary, but it's just more convenient, I suppose. Yeah. Um, I, it's definitely more convenient. I would agree with that. And and like what what we we can we haven't touched on is that you know so on the locate locum um on our website and our app we we also offer stay away. So if yeah. you if you do want to go away and do a block of shifts and like potentially have accommodation and travel paid then you can do that. And like, there's some quite cool stairways. Like, there's, there's, been, there's one that comes up time and time again. It's the Isle of Sky. So if you actually do fancy a little trip away, you can maybe combine it with a little holiday and actually do some shifts and, and get paid for your trip, then that, that, that's a good tip as well. What it kind of comes down to, we do a rate study every year. So we actually collate all our data and we tell you the average rate by city in the UK. So we break down the top 50 cities in the UK and the surrounding areas to tell you the average rate. So... It's like if you want to put yourself in an area with less locums and less competition, then you're going to get a higher rate. And that's mm. just the, the, the economics of supply and demand. And that's how it works. And um, so as the here says, if you get a driving license and you can <laughs> travel to less, less dense, densely populated areas, then you, you potentially get a higher rate. You know what you're, you're saying that, um, but like the, the option. So uh, again, like Locale okay, Locum's got a really great um, app. So um, I remember I went back to where my university was for literally um, like a three day kind of trip. Um, and one of the days I decided to, I went on filter, Norwich, um, did one locum shift and that paid for my whole trip. Um, yeah. So it, it's, it's like a really, really handy thing to have basically, yeah. Um, and just on that, while we're talking, I saw someone actually ask a question here, if I can bring it up, um, in terms of travel expenses and how easy it is in order to get um, some of your travel costs paid in terms of if you decide to go away um, or move somewhere else as well. So, um, Stevie? Um, I think it varies shift to shift and, and organisation to organisation in terms of um, who pays expenses and mileage and things. 
it's all so if you go onto the app if you actually want to look at a shift and see if it does you can go onto the app and in the shift detail page it'll tell you um if, if it does or not so it like like i said there's hundreds of thousands of shifts on there so it does vary from shift to shift and again probably like a supply and demand thing where if the demand's higher we'll be willing to pay so yeah that that i would say that i would say that um so yeah it varies that answers the question <laughs> hey, yes no it does brilliant thank you so much um and i just saw someone say um if you want to give someone five top tips what would they be i think they miss must have missed your slides here someone joined in late um so once the webinar finishes what we'll do is we'll actually send a copy a uh, link to it so you can go back and watch for anyone who joined late um you can go back and get um, the answers to those questions. Now, um, Stevie, did you see any other questions while you were looking at the comments? Um, there's, a, there's a good one here, just, um, I think it's, uh, are there many issues with staffing levels that you're aware of? Um, not sure, do, do you mean in terms of like the number of pharmacists or is that it within stores? I'm not sure. Could you clarify that one and we'll maybe come back to that? To, to be um, honest, if if there are if there are staffing level issues, I, I reckon um, if there are, it's more in the favour of the pharmacist that's trying to get the locum shift. Because um, yeah. at the moment, like from literally what I'm seeing, everyone's trying to get out of community pharmacy. Unfortunately, um, so the demand's quite high for um, locums. Um, like because we're P PCN, is it PCN? Yeah, like PCN roles, um, GP pharmacists, all these roles are opening up like people like the demand has gone up for community pharmacy quite a lot um mm. so if there are staffing levels if that's what you meant then it's very much in our favor basically yeah yeah and yeah. um, yeah. there's, there's a good bit that there's a really good question here on the city e systems so if you haven't what do you do yeah. in pharmacy you haven't used e systems for from from my from our side we on the shift again if you apply for a locum shift that uh, it says what system that the organization uses and then on our help guides there's the manuals for the, the systems and um, so in in worst case you can look at the manuals um, and you can sort of read up on it on everything and there was actually a case uh, a couple of months ago where someone that was doing a shift in, in a few months and they they didn't know and i put them in contact with the actual software provider and then they helped them get up to speed with youtube videos and tutorials and things so um does he hear what's your thoughts on that so um in terms of like so obviously um you can kind of do all the pre-reading that you want as well but when it comes to like actually um so you can prepare yourself pretty decently through those guides and videos um but if you're still like not really confident so what i did the first time i applied for um a role with boots i had never used um things called Columbus, um, never used it before. So what I did was before I applied for the role, I called the pharmacy first and I said, hey, um, who's going to be working with me that day? Um, and are they pretty well trained on the, e uh, on the PMR system? And they said, yes, they're really, really good at it. So what I did was, okay, I'll go because if I don't know the PMR system, that person does and all I literally did was ask as many questions as I could try to like put that theory into practice as much as I could um and then honestly after one or two shifts you're gonna be up to speed on it because PMR systems at the end of the day they're there to serve the same purpose yeah. they're not too different um it's just the interface which is different yeah. so um if you're still really not confident uh, call them first before applying. Be like, will there be someone who's really going to support me there? Will there be someone who's going to support me going to be there? Um, if there is, just go for it and learn. Learn yeah. on the spot. <laughs> That's a brilliant tip. So yeah. here, I think a lot of people potentially get put off um, going to yeah. different stores um, just in case um, there's fear around not knowing that system. So I think that's a brilliant tip about ringing ahead to see if there's someone can help guide you because if you don't know a PMR system, you're potentially cutting off um, yeah, a, a bunch of different shifts you could be picking up. So that's yeah, a really that's brilliant the tip. That's the thing. Like, again, if you're not feeling confident about it, what are you going to do? Are you going to literally seclude yourself from all those PMR systems that you don't know, or are you just going to go for it? Um, and I think you'll probably have a lot more benefit if you just go for it. Yeah. 
Yeah. Um, Brilliant. There's another one, Sarah, about um, stairways. Um, what, what I'll do for this one, Sandish, is I will um, send you straight through to the person who looks after our stairways and they can give you more information post-webinar. Um, so we'll pick that up after. Brilliant. And I saw, um, I still see there's so many more questions coming in, but we're just hitting about 40 minutes. So what I'll do is we've got one here and I think this will be one that we'll end on. So Stevie, what do we reckon? Are the rates here to stay? Um, we, we, did a, we did a rate study, like I say, based on our data, they should stay around the same as they are now. Um, the, like, like I say, it's, it's, it's a supply and demand thing, you know, like Zaheer mentioned, people are moving away from community, which is making more uh, less locums who, who are there to work. Um, again, like we were seeing there's regions that have, regions in the UK that have always had high rates, like so when you look at Inverness, it, every time we do a rate study, it's always an average rate of around £40 an hour, so um, that kind of feeds into the model. Um, are they here to stay? It, it obviously depends on the world situation. Like, you know, COVID had a def definitely had an impact um, on it. They're obviously the vaccination centres then again took more people out of the community to do the vaccinations. Um, and then obviously people being isolated and, and having sickness created more gaps um, for people to fill. So again, like it depends on the world um, situation. Judging by our data, similar in the last, the first quarter of this year than they were in 2021. So um yeah we like i said we produce a, a quarterly rate study where we share it out uh, and it looks pretty steady at the minute so it looks like it's on i don't know yeah don't know it can't, <laughs> you can't look into your crystal no, ball and see. No, no. <laughs> to, to be honest I, I think it's like that question is something that's like too difficult for local agencies for the big farm no. companies to even answer it really just depends on like everything outside of the well yeah. everything in the world that goes on i suppose um yeah we did we did a webinar and we talked about like you know internal factors that influence rates and external factors and the external factors are obviously things you don't have control of, over and that's like the world situation you know COVID. vaccinations <laughs> covid you know you just don't have control over. there's internal things that do have control over like more people going through pharmacy school more people coming out that's going to impact the rate and more people passing the GPHC exams. Um, you know, there's lots of things that uh, they'll, they'll play into the rate. Um, and it'll be interesting to see see what happens, you know. Um, but yeah, that's it's a, it's a very good question. It's one to think yeah. about. But I, I actually saw, um, so I don't know if you've heard of Chemists and Druggists, they actually released a article today, literally today. Um, I read that before I came on to this webinar and um, they through they have basically this thing where you can touch the locations and all of them actually said that there was an increase in locum rates um, yeah. nationwide. So, yeah. yeah, I think that's what our rate study supports as well. You know, I, I, there was a we, we broke it down by region and then by top 50 cities. So similar to what chemists and druggists were doing. Um, and yeah, there was an increase across the board in the last one we we um, we, we had out. So I think it looks pretty similar uh, mm. in the future data I'm looking at as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, well, brilliant. Um, we're just coming up here on 45 minutes, so we're probably going to be bringing this webinar to a close. Um, thank you so much to Zaheer and Stevie for coming on today. Um, it's been really um, interesting chatting through um, all the questions. I'm sure people's ears um, have really perked up, particularly with all the rates information as well. Um, so we've mentioned a couple of different resources and everything like that. Um, we will send out to you afterwards. I know that we didn't get through all of the questions, um, but we'll be in the comments um, um, later on this evening, tomorrow morning, um, answering you all and making sure you get all of your questions answered. Um, so thank you all um, again for joining us and we will see you on our next webinar. Okay. Bye. Thank you. Take care, everyone.